today's video, we're going to talk about lithium iron phosphate prismatic cell batteries and when it's most appropriate to top or bottom balance your cells. And if you buy healthy cells and they are matched by internal resistance and capacity by the seller, you can connect them in series and you can charge and discharge them with standard 12 and 24 volt equipment and everything will work fine. But what I'm getting is emails from people that buy from bad sellers and they have mismatched cells. And so one of the cells will have a smaller capacity than the other ones. And when you charge it up after bottom balancing, one of them will hit their ceiling upper limit voltage before the other ones. And if you use a standard equipment charger to charge this up to 14.4 volts, that one cell will be too high and you can damage that one. And so I figured out a way to fix this and when it's appropriate to use top balance Balancing. Even if you have a bad mismatched cell, you can still use it if you change the upper voltage limit. So let me explain. So let's say you build a 12 volt um, prismatic cell battery and you bottom balance all of the cells and that works out perfectly. But then you connect a 12 volt charger to it and you're charging up to 14.4 volts, but you realize that one of the cells hits its upper limit voltage of 3.6 or 3.7 volts before the other ones do let's say that it's charging and it's only at 13.4 volts what you're going to have to do is only charge to 13.4 volts if you bottom balance so that means that all of them when you bottom balance will come back down together but when you charge up again the upper limit voltage will be determined by the smallest capacity cell and whichever one hits that first will determine the state of charge that you can charge the entire battery up to and let's say it's 13.4 volts now you need to program all of your solar charge controllers and your chargers to charge up to 13.4 volts. I must stress though, if you get healthy cells, you're not gonna have to deal with this. But it's preferable in the long run to be able to change your charging limit voltage so that the batteries will last a long time. And so instead of charging up to like 100%, you're only going to be able to charge to 90 or 80%. Um, and this will actually improve the health of your battery. And the reason that we bottom balance these prismatic cells anyways is because you want to hang out at a lower state of charge or around 50%. With an e-bike or electric car, you're going to charge it up to 100% and you're going to discharge it all the way down. With a solar power system, you want to cycle it in the middle. And so that's why we're bottom balancing because we're hanging out in a lower state of charge. And so this is totally fine if you have healthy cells, but if one is mismatched, you're going to have to change the upper limit voltage. But let's say you can't change the upper limit voltage because you're using a cheap solar charge controller or it's very, very difficult to program. Like some of the Chinese ones, if you don't have the MT50 screen, it's very difficult. If you're using a Victron, you can change it in seconds. If you're using one of the ones I recommend on my website, you can change it in seconds and it's very easy. But let's say you just can't or you're using like an old RV charger converter for 12 volt batteries and it charges up to 14.4 volts. But the problem is, is you can't change it. What you're going to want to do instead is top balance the battery. And I don't like top balancing for solar power because I do not want to cycle it at high state of charge because it will not last as long. But if you are stuck in a situation that you cannot change your charge profile parameters, you're going to have to top balance instead and then change the low voltage disconnect settings instead. And that's easy to do because you just buy a battery protect. So let's talk about this. You get some cells, you put them all together, you charge to a state of charge that's high and then you balance them out. And then when it goes low, wait till one of the cells goes to its limit or its lowest limit then you will set the voltage for the entire battery's low voltage disconnect with the battery protect and so even if you have a mismatched cell and you're using cheap charge controllers that you can't change the profile parameters, you'll still be able to use this battery with a mismatched cell. So no matter what your circumstances, you should be able to still use the prismatic cell batteries without any issue. You just need to know when to top or bottom balance. For most of you guys, if you buy good cells and they work well, you should bottom balance and then check the balance while it's charging. What I'm now recommending on my website is for solar power application to cycle between 20% and 80% state of charge or 90%. I forgot which one I chose. The voltage though that I chose is because of people that I've read online and what's the most common out of balance scenario. And charging to 13.3 volts is very safe. 
it's around 90% state of charge, so you get a lot of usable capacity, but the chances of one of the cells hitting its upper limit voltage is very low. And even if one of the battery cells goes out of balance over time, charging up to 13.3 volts is preferable, even if you have healthy cells. So if you're using it for solar power, I definitely recommend going up to 13.3 volts instead. And then for the low voltage disconnect, disconnecting at 12 volts is preferable. It can go lower, but it's preferable to charge and discharge between like 90 and 10% state of charge, regardless of what battery you have if you're using it for solar power application. And if you're using a dedicated BMS, you don't have to worry about this. It will monitor each cell's voltage, and if one of them hits its upper limit or lower limit, it will disconnect the loads or the charging source, and that's great. But I haven't found a cheap enough BMS that works for these small, cheap used batteries, and from all the sources that I've read through the EV conversion guys and the marine guys that are using lithium iron phosphate batteries, these BMSs seem like a bad idea. I mean, they fail quite often in the cheap ones, you can spend a lot of money on the $400 ones or an Orion BMS that's like $1,500, but for the cost of a $200 or $300 battery, that just doesn't make sense. And for balancing, I don't really need a BMS at all for these lithium iron phosphate batteries. I've seen so many case studies and guys online that have used them for so many years and they do not go out of balance. And none of my batteries have gone out of balance at all. So as long as you set your upper limit voltage and your disconnect for your specific battery, how the cells are matched, you will not have a problem at all. So this is very easy for you guys to do. I updated all of the charge profile parameters on my website. And yeah, let me know if this video actually made sense to you because these are kind of hard topics to grasp if you're not watching the balance of these cells in front of you. It's very simple if you have a battery in front of you and you watch it charge up and one of them hits the voltage limit and you're like, okay, that's it. That's very easy to do. It takes seconds to do. But if you're a beginner and you're trying to not understand the voltage and all these other things and you're just trying to throw something together, you're going to get burned. You're going to waste a lot of money. But if you get good cells, you don't have to really worry about anything I said in this video and you can follow all of my other tutorials no problem. But yeah, if you guys get bad cells, you have to change the upper voltage limit. So yeah, let me know if this video made sense. I'm going to keep rambling on forever. So yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. Please let me know in the comments if you want me to talk about anything else. And check out my website because that has the safety considerations for these packages and they're constantly updated. Um, I constantly read more and more studies on different battery chemistries and how they work over time and what I need to tell you know my audience. So yeah, I'll talk to you guys later and thanks so much for watching. Bye.